Here we are live talking WWE Raw. It is Christmas Day. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful and magical Christmas as I did. It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, breakfast was amazing. You know, folks, it, it's it's a great day to be uh, to be doing anything, and it's Christmas. Like I said, hopefully you guys had a wonderful Christmas, and we're going to talk Raw now. We're going to talk WWE Raw. Um, I did not remember, <clears throat> because it's Christmas, I did not remember that it was Monday Night Raw tonight. Fifteen minutes into it, I finally go and I'm like, hey, it's Raw, so let's turn on Monday Night Raw. And what do I see? John Cena. So I'm thinking to myself, I, I really want to turn off Raw, but I got to give the peeps what they ask for, and that's the Raw recap. So I watched halfway this John Cena match with Elias. Uh, I never wanted Elias to win so much in my life. And, uh, you know, you bring back a big name like John Cena, he opens the show, he fights a, a mid-carder who really hasn't done anything. Ugh, I just can't say anything good about uh, having John Cena come back. Second time they have him come back for no good reason whatsoever. Uh, I just say retire him and uh, let him go in the Hall of Fame. Um, and then hopefully somebody burns that part of the Hall of Fame down. Um, so John Cena wins in a match. I mean, this is a surprise. John Cena is a glory hound. Um, you know, he, he only cares about himself. Um, he only wants himself to get over. I mean, look what he did to freaking Baron Corbin. So, Kurt Angle comes out, uh, or come, is backstage, fixes up his Christmas tree. Uh, Jason Jordan comes in and says, did you ask for me? Seth Rollins says the same thing. And says, I know you guys both want some old Joe, but big problem is Sheamus and Cesaro for you guys. You guys get to fight him, and it's for the title Congratulations. So we're going to have a title match for the tag team titles on the line tonight. And we'll see how it goes. We go into the ring. Charlie Caruso is in the ring with Brian Kendrick and gentleman Jack Gallagher. Um, Kendrick and Adeo Itami are going to fight. And it was a fairly good match. Um, I, I like Itami. Um, it looks good. And... Then he called for the GTS in the match. He hit it. At first it didn't look good, but then they showed the replay and Kendrick sold it like a million dollars. So Atami wins the match. They did make a big deal out of the fact that it was Chicago and it was Adeo Atami's move. So, you know, if that was a little uh, snide remark to CM Punk or whatever it was, uh, that's what it. That's what it is. So, then you had Absolution come out, and then Sasha, and Becky or Bailey and Mickey James. Um, Bailey has not done a lot lately, and it's very very sad. Um, I think Bailey. I, I called her the female John Cena with actual talent. Um, so I would love to see Bailey do something, but we'll see. Um, but Absolution versus Banks, Bailey, and Mickey James. We've seen this match so many times already. I'm getting very bored of it now. Absolution always wins, so I'm, I'm just not interested. Uh, give me something else. Uh, now, Samoa Joe is backstage with Renee Young and talks about Dean Ambrose. Of course, R- uh, Renee is married to Dean Ambrose, so it was really weird. Um, and there you go. They finally get the first commercial break because the first hour was commercial free. I really like that part. um, Except for the fact that I had to sit through the entirety of the John Cena match when I actually got in to see it. Uh, Kane fought fought Heath Slater. Um, Yeah, I'm not a good... Not thinking it was a pretty good idea for Heath Slater to go in there. I mean, he's got kids. And he's going to go fight Kane. So, 
uh, Rhino and Heath Slater come out and they did a little sidebar video earlier talking about, um, you know, Kurt Angle is threatening their jobs and they're going to make them tougher and stuff like that. Uh, Kane does beat Slater though and then takes down Rhino with a choke slam. Kurt Hawkins comes out and says, you know, I'll be the first to admit I'm not that not doing that great. Um, he's on a 146 match losing streak. Finn Balor comes out, and of course Finn Balor wins. So Kurt Hawkins is going to end with a 490 four hundred and ninety four or one hundred ninety one hundred forty seven match losing streak. Probably more than that, but you know. Who counts after after what it is? Um, they go backstage and Goldust is sit uh, there and Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas sing a Christmas carol to good old Goldust and give him a DVD of Santa's Little Helper starring The Miz and Paige. They didn't say Paige, but she was in it. And then they hand it over to Goldust hands it over to Titus O'Neil. And and it falls. You had Bray Wyatt come out. Only get jumped by Matt Hardy. So Matt Hardy didn't say anything. But he did the delete thing a whole bunch of times. And that that was interesting. Uh, so hopefully we'll have more of that soon. Uh, the bar is backstage and they do this whole gift exchange. Where... They give each other action figures of their opponents. And uh, they made lots of really big jokes about it. Then they set up the Christmas street fight with the cruiserweights. Now, you know, I love street fights. I really do. I'm a big fan of street fights. You know, matches like that are always fun. However, I want them to have some sort of a story. It doesn't have a story when it's the cruiserweights. Who I, I get that they have like this thing going on with the Zoe train and whatever else, but I just don't care, and uh, it made me care even less about this. The miracle of, on Thirty Fourth Street fight. Enzo, Drew Gulak and Davari versus Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, and Tuzawa. Now, the deal is that Alexander is going to get a shot next week at the title. So, obviously, he went over in the match. He pinned Davari to win the match. But, how silly was this whole thing? You have six guys, you're not trying, you're setting up for a match that you already know what's going to happen. And it was just kind of, it felt very flat. I didn't like it. Um, I know that they always do the things for Christmas. So, it's still, I didn't like it and I'm moving on. Um, Cedric Alexander does win it. There you go. So Enzo Mori goes backstage and sees Nia Jax. Um, probably one of the better, uh, things of the night for me. Besides the whole, uh, thing with, uh, Samoa Joe and Renee Young. So they had Nia Jax sitting there and they were both under the mistletoe and they were ready to kiss. And Alexa Bliss comes out at the last second Stops it and says she needs to talk to Nia Jax right away. About the women's title match, which is in, like, a few, you know, it's in a month. So, it it totally threw off. Enzo leaves, uh, or I mean, Nia Jax leaves. Enzo isn't happy, and the crowd... Like, turns him babyface right then and there. It feels so bad for him because he doesn't get any Nia Jax action. Oh, well. Uh, Renee Young is backstage with Roman Reigns. Very uh, weird promo. Um, just kind of backtracking on what Samoa Joe said, saying it ain't going to happen. And he wished Renee a Merry Christmas and walked off. So you had the Intercontinental title match. Uh, long story short, this match was kind of a 
Oh, uh, it's kind of a cluster of whatever. Roman Reigns did fight out of the Kohina clutch. Um, the referee warned Roman Reigns over and over again about letting him out of holds and stuff like that. But he shoved the ref and the ref calls for the bell. I guess that's how you win the match. And then they had a big kind of street fight action going on. Um, so it was interesting and they had the referees try to pull him off. And it's just how it works. Uh, Seth Rollins was talking about uh, Roman Reigns and Joe and... Uh, Jason Jordan walked up, and he said he owed, Rollins said he owed, he owed Kurt Angle a favor, and he wanted to beat up the bar. Uh, so we got this match. It, it will be the main event match. Uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel came out and said, I want an opponent. It's a secret Santa match. Uh, Braun Strowman comes out and kills them with like eight power slams. It was awesome. It was. Alexa Bliss came out. Said that how 2017 was her year. She dominated every obstacle. Just like a Jedi in Star Wars. I absolutely love that. Uh, she announced. Um, or she was talking about the first ever Royal Rumble match. Which then Asuka came out. Uh, said no one is ready for Asuka. Kind of did her own little thing. Uh, which went very very well. And. Uh, you know, I, I was pleasantly surprised with everything, but at the same time, if they were doing that Nia Jax thing, where was Nia Jax? It kind of disappointed me very much, uh, and it's just the way it goes. And Brock Lesnar next week in Miami will be there, so take a look for that. That will be awesome. And then they had the Raw Tag Team title match, Rollins and Jason Jordan against The Bar, because, you know, they... Are not, they're not just setting the bar. They are the bar, and I, I like, I like those guys. Cesaro is one of my favorite wrestlers. Uh, they, they turned it to thirteen here. Uh, good long match, but Jason Jordan pulls out the pin and the win, wins the match. Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan, the um, very interesting Raw Tag Team Champions. So that was a great finish for Christmas. Quite a surprise. And we're going to have Rollins and Jordan as the new tag team champions on Raw. We might see a rematch next week or something. I just wish they would pick another team. Maybe they can hand it over to the Revival. Because the Revival wasn't here on Raw. So we'll see what happens. And that was your Raw recap. I want to thank all you guys for listening. Especially on Christmas night. You guys enjoy yourself. I'll catch you here real soon on the Scott Show Podcast.